Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's Coldfire here and today I'm going to be bringing you a reaction um, to Judy Garland making her first appearance on the Johnny Carson Tonight Show. Um, I don't believe there's any singing in this but I just wanted to watch the interview to see you know what all it's about. So all you Judy fans out there I hope that you appreciate this being played. But without further ado Let's see what she says on here. It doesn't say what year. No one, I think, uh, receives more intense reaction from an audience and uh, brings emotions to such a high pitch as Judy Garland when she performs. Uh, she is one of a kind. And she opens tomorrow night at the Garden State Arts Center in Holmdale, New Jersey. And I suggest if you want to see somebody who walks out and takes an audience in the palm of their hand from the moment she walks on stage, it is this young lady, Miss Judy Garland. I tell you, I didn't get that kind of reaction when I was born. <laughs> yes, I did remember my dad did go, yaha, yaha. And as a doctor. <laughs> yes, right in the mouth he got me. He held me the wrong way. Aww. Hey, I thank you for coming tonight. You know, you've never done this show before. I know. And because uh, usually when you're in New York, you're busy and you've got a concert date or something. Yes. And I thank you for coming here tonight. You're welcome. And you look wonderful. Thank you. That is why. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think of this outfit? Well, I think it's beige. Yeah? Uh, yes, it's awfully good. Is it too yeah. wild, do you think? No, I think it's kind of underplayed. <laughs> <laughs> For a crook, you mean, it's underplayed. But no, you it's very wear. charming, it really. Well, men, you see, always wear dark suits. And you gals can wear things like this, under the mini skirts or the lace. And guys always have the same... Same old jazz, and I figured just for the fun of it. Why once didn't you wear a beaded Nehru suit, uh, Jack? Beaded Nehru? I've worn the Nehru, but beads and, and I just I don't. Mean, uh, no. I don't get along. You. Beads don't make it for Why? me. Why? People always stop me on the street. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine so. <laughs> yes. Hey, where's home? We, uh, I talked about Avalon tonight. They're going to be mad already about Avalon. Doc said he didn't like Palisades in New Jersey, but where's Homedale? New Jersey, the Garden, uh, uh, Garden Arts Center. It's near, uh, well... It's on exit 117? <laughs> Garden State Parkway. Well, you heard, but... <laughs> Are you here? Great ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like that came right out of the audience. Gee, that's why I didn't know you did that, too. Yeah. It's on the gardens, off the garden, off the garden state parkway. <laughs> it's off the gardens. That's my little orphan Annie impersonation. It's, it's off the garden state, off the garden state parkway on exit 17, right? 117. 117. Yes. Should never fool with your fans. No. They'll come down and lynch me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hostile group, isn't it? I love them. Do you play in the. Uh, is this uh, is this on the round uh, or regular theater? Yes, it's the biggest round I've ever seen. It's it's quite magnificent. It's a, a well, sort of a half indoors because it's a shell. Oh, with a covered it, bandstand you know, type of thing. And, uh, it's quite quite stunning. Do you like that kind of? Uh, does it give you closer uh, in uh, intimacy with the audience working like that? Well, with, with about ten thousand people. In the audience, it's a bit mm. hard to give an intimate show. 
That's but you do. I've seen you work when you've had a huge group, and you get that intimacy from the people. Does that mean we're leaving for a second? All righty, I thought maybe it was a lesson. I we're coming know. right. We're coming I right back. Know. Oh no! We'll be right back. She's a dream, you know. Yes, she is. And talent. She's got all your talent. Easy to see where the talent came from, and then her husband, uh, Chris, uh, Peter, and Chris are great. They're back in well, Australia. She's not now. married to both of them. No, no, I meant uh, <laughs> she's married to Peter. Yes. And they're back in Australia now. Yes. Hey, let me ask you a couple of questions here, because we didn't really plan anything, and we'll just throw questions. Anything you don't want to answer, why? Well, guess I'll say. What's been the high spot in your life? You've had so many great moments in front of audiences. What has been one standout thing that really? Well, one of the many comebacks must have been, let me see, I think uh, uh, working at the uh, Palladium Theatre in London for the first time was, was my best thrill. And that was probably and a command the performance? That. That's got to be. Yeah. When you came in at the palace here, it was absolute bedlam. Yes, well, I like bedlam. <laughs> you, you thrive on bedlam, don't you? Huh? What is it that gets your audiences, and, and I'm not trying to put you in an awkward position saying that, because you have such a, a rapport with the people who love you and come to see you. I mean, it's really adulation, and it's, it's unique. You're unique with it. Very few performers have that. But you create a, that wonderful uh, empathy, I guess is the word, with an audience. Uh, and I've seen you work many times, and it always happens. Um, I haven't a clue. You try to analyze it at all? Uh, well, it's really I, probably an unfair question because it's putting it's you on the spot. I think I, it's because I adore them, you see, and then... It comes across. Uh, yes, and I... Well, it sounds silly. No, it doesn't myself, sound silly. But I do think it's awfully nice for people to come in and sit in uncomfortable chairs and pay money to <laughs> hear me sing. So I like each person in the audience, and it seems... Sort of a marriage. It has to love. be because mm -hmm. I know performers. Uh, <coughs> no, I don't. I think you're right. I don't think performers. You've seen performers who I'm sure come out on stage and kind of throw it away, oh, as indeed. we say in the business. They don't feel in the mood or something, so they kind of toss it. And the audience resents it. The I audience think. resents it highly. Yes. I think you should give what well, you I think can it's give. rude. Yeah. Yes. After all, you're going to be on on stage. You know, don't look down at the audience with disdain. You enjoy it, don't you? I mean, I is that your it. biggest personal satisfaction, being in front of an audience? Well, I guess it is yeah. for most performers. I don't want to be there all the time. Well, of course not. You know, but I, because I like to be with my children sometimes. Most of the time, as a matter of fact. But I do like being in front of audiences, naturally, wouldn't you? I love it. I don't think well, we, you would, are. we would do this crazy business. When I leave, I'm going into the aluminum siding business. <laughs> I... Very closely allied to show business. I've always <laughs> had that in the back of my mind. Uh, has there anything you've ever wanted to do that you've never done? Retire. So. Oh, come on now. You... <laughs> come on now. You don't really want to, do you? I mean, uh -oh. quit singing? Well, I'd like to uh, uh, be terribly rich. I mean, sort of disgustingly rich, and so There's nothing I, wrong with that. No, no, not at all. And then just be able to sing when I want to. And then if, if that were the case, I'm sure I'd be singing every night. That always happens, yes, doesn't it? Yes. I don't know if it always happens. I've no, people always say if they get enough money, rich. they would retire, but they don't. Really? Joy Lewis put it pretty, pretty well once. He says, I've been rich and I've been poor, and believe me, rich is better. <laughs> I think there's yes, a I think I little bet, truth there. Uh, yeah, you bet your life. <laughs> yes. Remember that game you were going to... Yes, <laughs> yes, I think I do. Uh, who's had the greatest influence on your career? Uh, your entire life? On my career? Yeah. MGM? <laughs> no. No, no I would imagine so. And Vaudeville, before that. Vaudeville yeah. was kind of... You, start, you worked with your, your sisters originally yes, in yes, Vaudeville. Yes, and my mother. I love vaudeville, and I always love good acts. No, I do. I mean it. I like acts per se. Acts that come out. You wouldn't with have it. liked our act. Was you a bad act? Terrible. <laughs> really a bad act. Terrible. What did you do? What did you do in the act? Well, we we just sang, you know, and we, diner always diner, always. and I would I got to sing a solo. My mother would choose my songs. I, which was something inevitably like trees. When I, I was think four I years old, that one? you know. 
or or Buddy can you spare a dime? It was once in khaki, what is, once in khaki boots, gee, we look swell, full of that. Yeah, well, that looks dumb. Uh, with a little girl four years old. No, but that was a hard, that was a that was a grabber, wasn't it? Yeah, but I but I wasn't a soldier. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, we did have. Uh, we weren't in very good vaudeville. You know, no huh? keys time or orphan time. No, that know. stuff, huh? No, we were. What are some of the acts you worked with? Uh, well, we worked with, we worked with, <laughs> we worked with some pretty strange acts. <laughs> there was one, there was one man who had a, a, a Western quality about him, and he'd come out on stage. He had a singing coyote with him. <laughs> I beg your, <laughs> yes. I beg your pardon. A singing coyote. Yes. I like him already. Yes. I don't know why. But it was, it was, <laughs> poor soul. He, uh, uh, coyote was his only means of that living. Yeah. So he would uh, drag this thin, mongrelish thing, and uh, start to play the banjo and the. Uh, and he would sing a bit, and the coyote would go, oh. well, the Humane oh. Society heard about him, and they... Much decided, less the Musicians Union. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Humane Society decided that, uh, that the only reason the coyote howled was because the guy's music hurt the coyote's ears. <laughs> so they took the coyote away from him, and he went into the... Uh, Business of being a fire eater, which is rather uh, <laughs> well, most good coyote acts can double as uh, most of the singing coyote acts I've known. If they've fallen on hard times, have gone right into fire eating. No, uh, uh, it seems to work out. I don't know. No, this was disastrous because it takes about six months I like, to learn to do all that. You know, much uh, uh, exotic music. This is right from Western bands. And he had flowing robes and all this business, and and uh, when he finally got to the part where you you really sort of you know Put swallow this. that first torch, uh, we were standing in the wings waiting to follow him, and unfortunately, it, this was his first time after going to fire eating school <laughs> for six months. Oh. They do. I'd love to see the graduation on that. <laughs> that must be a great ceremony. But anyway, so this is the first first appearance. Yes, first appearance, and he had just come out. He's only been on stage about oh two minutes, and people were quite impressed. And he suddenly, but um, he he forgot to put that thick gelatin in your mouth. Oh. that keeps you from being absolutely burned to death. And as he did this, uh. he just went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and the coyote ran in the back door. Thought he was... No, he, oh. he, he threw the torch and caught the, the curtains of the theater on fire and burned the whole fire, <laughs> the, the whole theater down. You had some great acts. Yes, what was the be that's What's the best act you worked with? Well, you ever work with... I always heard about Fink's Mules. That was a, one of the names of the big vaudeville acts. Yes, uh, well, uh, we were, uh, they wouldn't let us on the same... Uh, Bill, I think some mules were... ...category, <laughs> no, we weren't that good. Uh, we worked with the man who just threw up for his living. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds awful. That, that's a bad act. That's... I ask you for a bad act. That's, that's a bad act. No, no. Is there a lot of call for that? I mean... <laughs> I mean, no, no, he, the auditions uh, must have been terrible. Class bill. No. That he, was a class bill, the yes, guy with the really, coyote and this yeah. fella. Uh, yes. And no, he would come out with this, he was a great big fat, ugly fellow, and uh, his name was Haji Ali. And he, he uh, had all sorts of uh, chic outfits, you know, yes. a turban and so forth. And he'd just stand and not do anything. He didn't dance, he didn't talk, he didn't do anything. Then his wife would sort of come out with, you know, with the <laughs> balloon pants, uh, chiffon and so forth, with a, an enormous fishbowl on her head, full of, 
a fluid which was half kerosene and half water. And she'd hand the, the fish bowl to her husband and then uh, he didn't dare talk, I guess, for fear from the last show oh. something might uh, occur. Are you, are you putting me on? No, I'm really not. No, <laughs> All right. No. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she would say, my husband will now drink this fish bowl full of, of uh, liquid, which is half kerosene and half water, and I'll go over here to this sort of oriental outdoor barbecue, and he will, uh, I'll light the fire, and he will then bring up the uh, water, and first he'll, the kerosene will come, and then the water will put the fire out. That's <laughs> true. I remember them, the aristocrats. <laughs> was not the act? Oh, yes. That is the wildest act I've ever heard of in my life. Oh, well, he was marvelous because the, the he, 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 do you know how long it takes to drink? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> not, not to mention putting out the fire. No, not the slightest idea. Just, you know, for eight minutes going, <laughs> and finally he finished this and uh, one drum roll, we only had three pieces in the band in those days. And he would then turn and sort of do this. And the bloody uh, outdoor barbecue was way over there. And he'd simply oh, go, yeah. and <laughs> out would come the uh, uh, kerosene first, and the audience would get and a it was bit on nervous. Fire, and then the fire. And then the water came. Uh, How did Sullivan ever miss that act? <laughs> huh? You know why? If, Ed, if that Ed would ever seen that act, no, he'd have gone crazy. The man died of Tomain Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll buy that. Not, you know, isn't that strange? Got hold of some bad food and went, huh? Yeah. Got oh, that's wild. That's funny. Yes. Let me do this. It's, uh... It's, Why don't you advertise some characters? Okay, yes. It's Louis and I, I presume, showing you how to save money during the two for the money sale at Rexall. <laughs> We're going down memory lane with some of the oh, bigs in showbiz. <laughs> what are some of the other? I know you can't have another act in that in vaudeville. Who's the favorite person outside of vaudeville that you've ever worked with, whether it's in motion pictures or uh, anything? Mickey Rooney. Mickey? Yeah. You and Mickey were sensational. <laughs> there is another great uh, chunk of talent. I should say. Oh, he's brilliant. Uh, no, I really think that people, if Mickey, because of his size, he was limited in certain parts he could play. But he's got great, great natural acting ability and if Mickey would have been uh, and I'm not saying this patronizingly handled, yeah and properly handled boy what a career and he's had a magnificent career yes he has I don't think his size would have meant that much well, I'm only saying like leading man or something or the young leading well, man I was difficult well I could have gotten short leading ladies I suppose yeah, I, I suppose so. uh, he was your favorite he was, who was your favorite gal uh, to work with my, my favorite one gal to work with well, I, I liked all the, the women I worked with. I didn't have any fights with any of them at all. <laughs> Those so, days of going to the studio school must have been uh, mm. fascinating because all of you, <laughs> uh, with Mickey, and who were some of the other uh, youngsters the, the at that time? Room. Yes. That was a quite a class, if I remember. Well, it, it was quite a strange group. It was Freddie Bartholomew and Mickey Rooney. Freddie Bartholomew, I believe, is now an advertising executive with one of the agencies in New yeah. York City. Yes, that's right. But he was then, you know, little Lord Fauntleroy right. in the Dickens, absolutely beautiful English child, and then Mickey Rooney and Lana Turner and myself, yeah. and some strange girl, little tiny thing, called Juanita Quigley. Juanita Quigley? She Juanita never made it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Juanita Quigley. And we Poor had Deanna Juan. Durbin. Deanna Durbin. Yes. Dina Durbin was there. And that was about it. Did you ever learn anything in those classes? Or were you... Not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? Just n nuttiness all the time? Well, we always had... Now, you, the rules were, I think, that you what, you had to be tutored so many hours a day. Yes, according but to... they would be broken up, you see. You could do ten minutes of of history, say, and then you'd have to go rushing to the set because you had, they were ready for you, your scene, and you'd do that and then go back and, and try to 
the, the history. And I wound up reciting more history in the scene and doing, uh, I got it all mixed up. I, I must say, I can cop out and I just think I was plain old ignorant. <laughs> Do you ever see Mickey anymore or run into any Oh, yeah, yeah. I think Mickey, the last time he was with us, is, uh, was doing a picture at the time. I think he was also head of a, a school for, for youngsters. Yes, uh, talented uh, yes. youngsters, a training, uh, uh, an acting school. They don't do that anymore, do they? The stu major studios where they put a lot of youngsters under contract now. No, I don't think they do. I think they should. It's a good training ground, you know. It's rough, but it's good. I'll bet it is. I'll bet it is. How long will you be down at uh, Homedale now? I understand five, five, five days, days down. Five, I know five where. Five nights. Five nights, <laughs> starting tomorrow night, which is June the twenty-fifth, which will take you right up through Friday night, right? And so. I hope, well, I know you'll kill them down here. You do every place you perform. And so it's on Garden State Parkway, Route 117 at the uh, uh, Theater Arts Center, is it? Or? Gar <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> the Garden State Arts Center down there. And uh, I can't thank you enough for coming tonight. Well, I can't really. thank you so much. You're a doll. You're a She gets in front of an audience. She's oh. dynamite, isn't she? Does she have fans? She's quite a gal. Yeah. She has said quite a life. We'll be back in a moment. Bennett Surface with us. Here's a word from the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. Yes, she was phenomenal. Um, yeah, I just had to react to that because I've never seen her do a full interview before, and this one was the first time that she was on the Johnny Carson show. So... It's just fun to watch her. I mean, I didn't want to pause it or anything because she's just so damn funny. I mean, no matter what kind of story she tells, she just makes it sound so hilarious. And you could just sit there and watch her for hours, you know, entertain you. And it's just so weird because the first time I ever saw Judy Garland was with the Wizard of Oz and in the movie she was you know she sang but she was more serious but um, I guess as she grew older and she had her you know was becoming more and more famous um, she just she was just naturally funny and it just shows in this interview of how much fun a person like that could be just to sit around your house and have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and just, you know, just talk about whatever comes up on your mind and it, she would probably make me spit my tea up or coffee or whatever we were drinking because she was a natural and like he said, you know, she's a great crooner she knows how to sing and command an audience and she's going to be playing five nights they said at some place that holds 10,000 people back then that's a big concert so god I would have loved to have been back in those days but anyways I do hope that you enjoyed this um, performance even though it was no singing but I do like the talking part and to get to know her a little bit better as a person. Um, but that was Judy Garland makes her first appearance, jo Johnny Carson Tonight Show. Well, I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did reacting. Thank you, and you have a great day. Love you. Bye-bye.